So far we've seen dot plot, which is really just us saying, hey, throw everything down on the page as quickly as possible. I don't care what it looks like. Most of the time, though, you do care what your maps look like. A lot of what you use GeoPandas for is going to be analysis and maybe not final published visualization. But even if you're just exploring your data, being able to customize your maps and understand the different options available will open up a lot of doors. So the first thing you want to do when customizing a map is to pick your projection. Now, we've talked about a few projections so far, like Mercator for web maps. No matter what CRS our data is in, to begin with, it's really easy to change it for mapping. For example, let's take this here and then reproject it to Mercator. So dot to CRS, proj, merc. And there we go, plotting it. So we can definitely see a difference in the projections here. So the Mercator projection has a handy name shortcut. So you can just say, hey, convert all this to Mercator and map it. Using .2CRS to change the coordinate system does not change your original geo data frame. So if we were to plot this again, states.plot, we're going to end up with the same as our original map. So it's only going to be Mercator where we do the dot plot after here. If you want to permanently change your CRS, that's a totally different thing. But we're just talking about mapping right now. We're just talking about changing the projection for a map. Handy way to do that is dot to CRS, change the CRS, and then join it to a dot plot later. Mercator is not the best projection in the world. So I don't recommend using it all the time. A, it's for the entire world, and we're just mapping the United States. And B, it's just not a very good projection for a number of other reasons. So I'm guessing you're going to usually be using something else. But how do we use something else? So dot two CRS can take a lot of options. So let's figure out what we can get to work with those something else projections. When you're mapping an area, you're probably not the first person to have ever done it. And as a result, there are probably commonly accepted projections for those areas. If you're able to track those down, it's going to be really, really helpful. At some point, we'll talk about how to figure out what those best projections might be. But for now, let's just assume you found the right projection. For example, when you're mapping the continental United States, you'll often use Albers Equal Area Conic Projection. And you don't have to only remember that super complicated name. You also have to remember a bunch of settings for it. So for example, let's track it down. So this right here is the continental United States Albers Projection. And if we scroll down, these are all of the pieces of information that come with it. These are all the things that you need to remember. You need to remember several different latitudes, a longitude, a datum, all kinds of things. If we wanted to type all of this in to GeoPandas, we could. It would look like this. So instead of proj merc, I'm going to break this down onto several different lines. We could do it on one, but I have a lot to type. So the datum is NAD83. No definitions? That's true. The projection is Albers equal area. The latitude 1. The latitude 2. the latitude zero, the center, and the longitude zero, negative 96. Whew, that's a lot of stuff, right? Let's map it, see how it looks. Mm. 
That is a beautiful United States, right? But the, despite the fact that this is a beautiful United States, this is a really ugly bunch of code up here. We don't like this, but we do like the map that came out of it. So luckily, we don't have to type all of that stuff, right? Every CRS has a code, which we've talked about before, right? The EPSG code comes from that big database of European petroleum stuff, right? So this one we can see is EPSG 5071. There might be other ones, 2163, 4325. What happens is you look up this code and there's a big database somewhere that has all of that already stored in it. It's actually on your computer. So it says, oh, you want EPSG 5071, EPSG 2163. I know all those settings already. You don't have to type them in. So if you don't want to remember or type out all of this nonsense here, you can actually just feed to CRS the EPSG code. And the way that you do that is EPSG, remember this one was 5071. Now you do have to know the EPSG code and you do have to do EPSG equals, which is slightly different from this. This other method, we are giving it piece of information at a time by piece of information at a time. This is a dictionary with keys and values, keys and values. If you're just feeding to CRS an EPSG code, EPSG equals. No braces, no quotes, no colons, none of that stuff. Geopandas knows all of those EPSG codes already. Whether they're appropriate or not, you could put a terrible EPSG code in there or the wrong EPSG code, and it'll just work fine. It'll map according to that EPSG code. Just remember that it is EPSG, EPSG, no dictionaries, just EPSG equals. So anytime you're making a map of a specific area, you should have a projection in mind. And as long as you have the EPSG code handy, it's really easy to make a nice looking map by just feeding that into two CRS. What I like to do is keep a list of projections that I use a lot. Ones for specific states or specific countries or different world projections that are good for specific situations. Maybe you wanna maintain shape, maintain area, things like that. I'll leave you some links so that you can research a little bit more about what the best projection might be for your map. But once you've found it, you'll be able to use it as long as you got that EPSG code. That is definitely something to be proud of.